I know that many of you um, are seeing some old friends and all, and that's great. And we think that uh, this day is going to be a very special day. But we do have a few announcements that we want to share with you as we go along, and then we want to get into our song service. And I hope that everyone has, uh, has a bulletin, and inside that bulletin is a special song, mm, excuse me, song sheet. And so be aware of that. We're going we're gonna to move right into that uh, very shortly here. But uh, first, we're going to call upon uh, Ashley. We'll let you do for you lead us off. Ashley has a special announcement she wants to share with us. I'm selling Boy Scout popcorn again. I'll be at the front door, or actually, since. Yeah, I'll be at the back door since we'll, I'll catch you as you're going to the luncheon. We have a lot of new flavors this year, and I'm selling it. I know I'm not a boy, but I'm selling it to help support my venture crew, and we really need the money to do different service projects around the community and go on high adventures. So I'd really like it if you'd help support. And if you, if you don't know anyone or have a knack for uh, popcorn, you can make a special donation and we'll send uh, popcorn overseas to our troops and so I really appreciate that if you come and see the different selection. Also we want to call your attention to uh, next Saturday um, we're going to have a fall cleanup day for the outside going into the, the fall time of the year here and Rick do you want to address that please sir real quickly. First off, I want to thank everybody that came out yesterday to help clean the rock. Uh, some of you guys probably got sore backs this morning. Uh, ladies, maybe some scrubbing the, the kitchen yesterday, but the rock looks great. I appreciate all you did. Next Saturday, we're going to do the same thing to the outside of the church. Um, same thing we usually do when we have it. Be here at 7 o'clock for breakfast. 8 o'clock, we start cleaning up. It's going to be mostly uh, weeding and edging and trimming and everything just to make everything look good for the Peace Colloquy on Sunday. So hope to see everyone out here for you. We have a great time, fellowship with the breakfast, and then we have a good time outside enjoying the great weather that God gave us. Thank you. I do just want to add to what Rick said about yesterday. For all the special people that were here, uh, the group of men and a group of women that gathered up here yesterday morning at 8 o'clock, that we were able to mop and sweep and clean the rock, we cleaned the bathrooms, we cleaned the kitchen. And to all of you that were here, let me just say how much I appreciate you being here and pitching in. It, it turned out just exactly like I hoped it would, that we had plenty of help. It wasn't a real strenuous job on any one person, and we were able to get a lot accomplished yesterday morning. So for those who are here and you know who you are, I thank you so very, very much. Also, if you would, just make note, we've been talking about this for a number of weeks now, but finally next Sunday at 5 o'clock will be our Peace Colloquy. We hope that you will be here. We hope that you will support this. 15th place is the recipient of our Peace Award this year. Uh, so come and be here and at five o'clock next Sunday also this afternoon and we have a pretty full day here but those of you that can sh stay and share with us this afternoon at 2 30 is the Gulf Mission Center conference fall conference we will introduce and set apart I understand a brand new Mission Center president also, I think there's a priesthood call that was going to be shared with the congregation and some election of some delegates. So it's a, it's, a, it's a great conference, and it's something that we need to be part of and something that you need to attend and to be aware of. So please, uh, after we share with our potluck luncheon and after um, our 11 o'clock service, we invite you to come and sh back here into that 2.30 and gather here in the sanctuary for that Mission Center Conference. And that pretty much is all the announcement. Is there anyone that needs to share anything from the congregation? Laura had a birthday. Laura had a birthday. Uh, well, we need to sing happy birthday to her, Susan. 
years? 35 years. Well, you're not but 40 years old. You, would you get married when you was five? <laughs> All right, so we have an anniversary. We have a birthday then. All right. Oh, thir oh, Thursday? All right, okay. Um, George. I, I, I'm almost the same way. <laughs> we probably need to get people to stand. You want them to stand up? All right, Susan is the anniversary. So you, yeah. And Barbara, stand up and make your announcement, please. Go ahead. Eric's was birthday. That's right. Okay, Doris. Well, wonderful. All right, anyone else? And we, you did, George, did you hear about Laura? You heard Laura, okay. All right, let's sing um, happy birthday first, and then we'll sing happy anniversary. You don't do that, okay? <laughs> All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. I know this is a very special day and a special week for a lot of people, and we wish you happy birthday. We wish Susan happy anniversary, and all of those that this is a special week and special, a special time for them. If you will, as we continue to have some of our guests come in and share with us, and there's so many of you right now that I wish I could just start naming and tell you how glad I am to see you, but it, I am, I am so thrilled to death to see some of the faces that I see out there in that congregation this morning. Um, I could say I hope this is not going to be the only and last time I see you, but we do welcome you and we're so glad to have you. If you will, take your song sheets. We're going to start out with a little, I guess it's okay if I say, say reorganized Latter-day Saint singing, I guess that's okay. Is that all right, Lamont? We can, we, we, we can say that, okay, nobody's going to throw me out. <laughs> but take that song sheet out, we want to start out with... Um, just a closer walk with thee, we're going to sing the first verse, of course the refrain, and the last verse of that song. And, if you will.
welcome each and every one. I wanted to say welcome to our worship service, but I think we've already worshiped. What do you think? That was beautiful. Thank you all. Brought back a lot of memories for me. Uh, I want to welcome each one. We know that this is a special day for all of us. It's a special day for those that are below the age of 75 because we get to honor those that have been so faithful and so dedicated for so many years, and we do feel that way. We love you all. We thank you for what you've given each one of us. And I know a lot of us probably wouldn't be here if it weren't for you all. I was thinking this morning, if Miss Lib hadn't held my babies when they were little, I probably would not be up here today. Because you know how it is when you're a young mother, you need all the help you can get. And it was always so sweet, she would just take my children. And I will never forget that, Lib, thank you so much. And thank all of you for what you've done. I also uh, wanted to just ask you seniors if uh, when the service is over there, you can thank everyone, but there's two special people that you need to thank. One is our pastor, Wayne Gibson, because when he met with his counselors at the first of the year, one of the things that he really wanted to do was to have a Sunday to honor our seniors. So this is today. The other person that I would like you to give a special thanks to is Larry. I cannot tell you how many hours he has spent gathering your pictures <laughs> and then taking them and getting them scanned and then getting them on a disc and then taking them to, to David to straighten the disc out. <laughs> and, so, and then he planned our service, so be sure and thank him because he has spent countless hours on this service. It is so good to be with all of you. It is so good to worship with all of you. All of those young, all of those old, all of us in-betweeners, thank you for being here, and thank you for serving.
Father, we come today as family to honor our seniors and to uh, praise you for your goodness to us. We are thankful for each one here today, the young, the old, and the in-betweens. And would you bless this service with the excitement that our children bring? Would you bless this service with the spirit of responsibility that the in-betweens feel and for the spirit of thanksgiving that our seniors feel? And would you bless this service for those who have gone before us, to those who will come after us to carry on the spirit of the community of Christ Church Mobile Congregation. Thank you for the service. We ask your blessings. May it bring laughter, joy, hope, love, and peace. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to talk to you about seniors as uh, today is seniors day and I want to go back to when I came to this congregation in 1965 we were uh, building wanting to build this building move from Baltimore Street and I remember a lot of the seniors that are not here today and a lot of you that are here and a lot of your grandparents and your relatives well one thing in particular i remember of, about after building this church they wanted to have an irrigation system but as i remember money was tight and i thought they should just use a garden hose but there was some seniors stepped up and said no we're going to have an irrigation system and then as time rocked on we needed an activity building. And I don't know where the money came from, but there were some seniors that stepped up. And you know who they are. They were your family, your grandparents. They gave till it hurt. And at this same time, we needed a kitchen in that new building. Like $35,000, I remember. Where did the money come from? It came from your grandfathers and family that gave till it hurt. And I, I don't want to mention any names, but there's one name that I'd like to mention is Artis Bickery. She wanted a library for this church. And it was being built the same time the, the kitchen was. Where did the money come from? One thing that I think about today is the people that gave, they're giving, we're enjoying. And to you young people, I would challenge you, give and your giving will keep giving. And we, look what we have today. Will the ushers wait on us now? Dear Heavenly Father, we come thanking you to praise you, to pray in your name, to think of our forefathers, of the seniors that have passed, and the seniors of today. Lord, bless us all, our young people, that we can continue to give, to spread the gospel, and to let this light on this hill shine. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you, Anne, for playing He Touched Me. I can still hear Martha playing that, can't you? Thank you. Okay, now for the fun part of the service. Larry lets me get to do the fun part because he's always scared of what I'm going to say. <laughs> but anyway, we are going to enjoy some pictures now. Before we start, I, I kind of want to preface it to you. Uh, we have pictures of each of our seniors, and um, we'll show the picture for a minute. We won't say who it is for a minute, so you can kind of think about it. Some of them you'll recognize right off the bat. Some of them you will have to think about who they are. And then after a moment, I will tell you who they are. And then I'm going to read a little statement, a sentence or two about each senior. And I want you to know, I didn't write these statements by myself. <laughs> I had, I met with a group, we came over, and we all wrote a sentence or came together with a sentence about each, or, or two sentences sometime, about each senior. And I want to tell you what, y'all gave us so much fun. <laughs> I think we laughed and had such a good time coming up with the sentences, so we hope that you will be pleased with them also. All right, um, David, if you will show us our first picture. Everybody know who that is? She looks like a movie star, doesn't she? I think her hair was probably red at the time that picture was taken. Goldie Andrews. <laughs> Miss Goldie, don't we miss her? A faithful lady who loved and spoke highly. Oh, could we dim the lights so you could see the pictures better? Yes, if you. Okay. A faithful lady who loved and spoke highly of her family. Don't turn the light off up here, though, because I got to read it. <laughs> who loved and spoke highly of her family, and she was a warmer for the back pew. And all of us who've ever spoken up here know, if Miss Goldie heard you, everybody heard you. <laughs> and we miss her. Okay, next one. <laughs> That's right. That is Elizabeth Barber. This picture was taken in 1952 in front of the fish hatchery in, in Huxford. Is that right, Ms. Lib? No, no. Oh, in Mobile. It was taken here in Mobile. Okay. All right. Lib, you are real thin. <laughs> not that you're not thin now. <laughs> Lib quietly fulfilled her task as choir member, book steward, kitchen and yard worker, baby holder, wife, mother, grandmother, and now a great-grandmother. Thanks so much. Okay, next one. Who's that tall, thin-looking young man? <laughs> Susan, you're getting them too fast. <laughs> that is Dick Barber, Richard Barber. Did y'all recognize him? <laughs> This was taken at Payne Air Force Base in the state of Washington around 1953 or 54. Remember? 54? Okay. Dick is a faithful servant, capable leader, tedious worker, and guiding light for every pastor. Okay, next one. Who's that good looking guy? Sonny, John Black, yes, Sonny. <laughs> this was uh, when he was a CB's, around 18 years old. I had never heard of CB's. Larry had to explain to me what it was. It's, it's a part of the Navy, right? It's CB's, and you work, you build things. So I have learned something, Sonny, thank you. A tireless worker, whether building our church library, are working on improving Bluff Springs campgrounds, or helping with the youth, and usually while he's working, he's telling one of those crazy stories of his uh, that will make us laugh, or either they're serious and make us think. 
and he's one of the barbershop group that was a recipient of the Peace Award. Okay, next one. All right, I think you know all of these people, but the person that we are uh, honoring in this one is Doris, Doris Booker. She's with, of course, her sister Betty and her cousins Richard Miller, Dorothy and Carol Smith. So Doris, thank you for letting us see all of these people. We appreciate that. An open, honest lady who proves that a little nonsense now and then is relished by women and men. <laughs> okay, next one. Uh-oh. <laughs> Francis, uh, everybody knows who that is. Francis Bowers. All right, and it's uh, a little, we have to look at it with our, with our head turned to the side, I guess. Huh? A lady who proves that whatever is worth doing is worth doing well. Whether raising children, children are being our recorder. And uh, when we were, were working on this, Francis, someone said, all I can remember is Francis with all those children hanging along behind her. <laughs> okay, the oh, there, we got it straightened just as we had to turn it. Okay, this is... Uh, we all know her husband, Jim, who is, always comes there as our friend. And um, the way we'd best describe Jim, and you be sure and tell him, I don't see him here right now, but is he's our gentle giant and respectful observer. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can anyone recognize this one? Because I did not recognize this person. Dolly Parton. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> this is Helen Cardi. This was when Helen was 21 years old. I know, I didn't recognize it. I would not have known. I don't think I've ever seen Hel Helen with dark hair. <laughs> That's, and, and I don't think Helen's with us today. Most of you know she's been in the hospital and just recently got out, but she's doing better, and uh, we miss her when she's not here. Steadfast saint who stays faithful, whether life brings joy or sorrow. Who do we think this is? <laughs> now, Susan, you can't say that. <laughs> this is Joy Chaddock, and this was taken when she was 17 years old, the year she graduated high school. Is that right? That's right? Okay. She's a small package of unexpected quality, serving as church secretary for years and years. How many years, Joy? 1980 to today. That's a few years, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Anybody know who this is? That's right, Frankie, Frankie DeFord. And this is with Frankie's uh, Uncle Hal Miller. Was this your wedding picture? That's what I thought. Isn't that beautiful? And I want to tell you, later on, uh, if we get to show the ones in the rock, we have a stunning picture of Jackie, I mean, of uh, Frankie in a bathing suit. Ooh, she was a bathing beauty, too. <laughs> a sweet and gentle lady wherever you meet her. Next. Uh, <laughs> we know who this is, don't we? Ed Fleming. This was when he was in the 82nd Airborne. He did 35 jumps. And Ed, I got to tell you, when uh, Larry was having these pictures scanned at the store, the girls kept coming up to where he was saying, look at that man. He looks like Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> a quiet, faithful gentleman who knows his scriptures. Okay. Anybody know who this is? <laughs> Anybody know? No? This is June Gale. This was her, her prom dress around the time of graduation. Isn't that, is that right, June? Isn't that right? 
didn't we have some beautiful women? We still do, but I mean, didn't we have some? <laughs> uh, June, for you, we said Elsie Mae Jr. <laughs> Full of fun and a bubbly Alabama fan. <laughs> okay, our next one. Anybody recognize that guy? <laughs> you hadn't changed any. Everybody recognizes you. <laughs> George Goff, Sonny. This was taken when he was 35 years old. When we think of Sonny, we think of a Book of Mormon scholar, an antique car buff, and a great fixer-upper. <laughs> All right. Okay. Can you picture who this is? Peggy Gross. Yes, and this is Peggy with David Jr., isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? If you need decorations, gumbo, or cookies, especially for holidays, you called Peggy. <laughs> okay, who's this daring young man? <laughs> of course, we all know this is Eric Joseph. Eric, you had the cutest dimple. <laughs> How old was, were you, Eric, in this picture? Do you remember? No. <laughs> Barbara, do you remember? No, okay. If you have heard Eric's prayers, you have heard a heavenly voice. He worked with our youth, he fished, he would sing, and he was one of our, uh, in the, one of the barber shoppers that won the Peace Award. And somehow he's managed to be married to Barbara and put up with her shenanigans for many, many years. <laughs> You know, they would. They used to would come back from vacations, and we wouldn't ask Eric, "Did you have a good time?" We'd ask Eric, "What Barbara do?" <laughs> okay. Who is this young man? That's right, Marvin Madden. He. This was taken right after he graduated from Auburn, where he officiated high school football and baseball. Boy, you had to be fit to do that, Marvin. That was great. Deeds, not words, speak for him. Okay. We know these two people, don't we? Of course, this is Jackie, Jackie Barton, and of course, it's taken with Marilyn. Uh, and this was taken at their 50th class reunion at Graceland College. They went together, isn't that sweet? She proves that there are two ways of spreading light, to be a candle or to reflect it. And believe me, you do. Next one. Well, take me out. <laughs> this is Audrey McCord. Uh, Audrey, I don't think is able to be with us today. And this was taken um, during the time I was pastor at some function. She was able to be here. Uh, a wife, a mother, and a definite caretaker of her siblings. Oh, does anybody know who that one is? Mel Gwen Miller, that's right. This was taken when she was getting ready to go to Graceland. Was a teacher of children and still has that dry humor still today. Who's this young guy? He's not so young anymore, let me put it that way. <laughs> Anybody know who that is? Lloyd Parker. This was when Lloyd was 29 years old, and doesn't he still have that pretty smile? <laughs> he still does. Uh, okay, raker of leaves, faithful servant who has been around and still looking forward to staying around to 100 and beyond. <laughs> and we hope you do, Lloyd. Okay. Who are these two people? That's right, Charles and Annie Mae Presley. This was taken on their wedding day or right, at, right, right after your wedding. And, and that is so cute. Y'all were so young. 
<laughs> uh, okay, for Annie Mae, we have, a, of course, a dedicated wife and mother and grandmother. But I didn't know this. You are a connoisseur of Mexican food. And she's one of our ladies who still cans. She can can. You got to teach me how to do that sometime. I don't know anything about canning. <laughs> and Charles, quiet, warm servant who makes us feel very welcome when he speaks. If you ever notice that when you speak to him, he always gets this big smile and just is so glad to see you. We thank you both. That is such a neat picture. Anybody know who this one is? <laughs> That's Betty Miller. I tell you what, like I said, we have beautiful ladies, don't we? I understand this was taken uh, high school right near graduation. Is that right? Early 40s. Early 40s. Isn't that beautiful? Multi-talented minister can sing, can create worship programs and worship settings, and never a bad word comes from her mouth. Okay, who is this good-looking guy? <laughs> Travis Rester. He graduated, this was taken when he graduated from Marion Mi Military Institute. Wow. An Alabama fan? I bet you don't think we remember this, but we do. An Elvis impersonator? <laughs> and a water buddy of Claudia Steiner and John Sebastian. They were baptized together, the three of them. <laughs> okay. Next. Who's this pretty lady? Lois Rose, yes. This was taken when Lois was 18. Is that right, Lois? Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Faithful soul. If it wasn't for Lois, we would not have Roger. <laughs> Okay, our next one. Who is that good-looking man with a flat top? Lumbo and Scott. That's right. Look. Flat top may be gone, but he's still Lemoyne. Uh, this is what we came up with you, Lemoyne. Handsome is as handsome does, but it sure helps to be born that way. <laughs> okay, next one. Okay, who knows who this is? Thomas Sutton. That's right. And, and you know, we used to call him Red, didn't we? He had red hair. I, w I don't think he's able to be with us today, but we did get the picture. Dedication and leadership in a little package. One of the greatest generation. All right, who's this lovely lady? Laura Vickery. This was taken around 1947. Isn't that beautiful? And we miss Laura too. Voice of an angel, choir member forever. Okay, and I have lost my money. Just a minute. <laughs> Let me go. Who is this beautiful lady? That's right, Marsha Vickery. <laughs> This was taken in around 1952. Is that right, Marcia? <laughs> hey, Jack, you married up. <laughs> Whether it's numbers in business or numbers in music, she always gave it all. Y'all know that Marcia was a uh, accountant were the counting figures, numbers, and, and then of course she played the organ and piano for years for church. So, so she was working with numbers all the time. Thank you, Marcia. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Who's this good looking guy? Yes, that's Jack, of course. Jack Vickery, and this was taken in 1947 when Jack was in the army. And Jack has always said, you know, how most guys didn't want to join the army? He wanted to, because he wanted to get away from the farm and the hard work. The army was easy for him. <laughs> A dedicated priest and faithful servant, whether serving communion, helping with the youth at Solid Rock, or working at the food bank. 
Now, y'all, I did not recognize this person, so y'all got to think about who this is. That is Julia May Wilts. <laughs> Julia May, I did not recognize you. Uh, this was taken uh, when she was around 18 or 19, is that correct? Right before she went to business school, college, business college. Can you believe at the time this was taken, she was a basketball star? She looks too feminine, doesn't she? <laughs> a basketball starter in life. Always making baskets in life, whether professional business, uh, women's business leader or women's leader at church. Okay, do we know who this lovely lady is? <laughs> that is Miss Gladys. And we're sorry, this picture is a little grainy, but we had to get this from an email, so it's just a little bit grainy. Gladys, about how old were you when this picture was made? 17. Wow, she just graduated from high school. We just have beautiful women. Kind, sweet, lovable lady, always mindful of others. And thank you for the notes and cards and letters you send to all of us. We appreciate it. And last but not least, that is, of course, Linnell Wilson. And, of course, Linnell can't be with us today, but Linnell, we miss you. And this is a picture of her with her two stepdaughters classy lady who was one of our greatest orators. Somewhere in all these papers I lost my, my program. Okay, now we have a real treat. All of you seniors who have ever sung in the choir, we'd like you to come right up here, and they're going to sing What a Friend We Have in Jesus for us. Okay. All you seniors. Okay, Lemoyne, Dick, uh, Betty, Marsha. If you have ever sung in the choir, just come stand right here. And it's page, yeah, if we can turn the lights back on. It's page um, 80, 86, thank you, in the hymnal. Francis is coming up, good. Sonny's coming up. Have we got all of you? Can you make it, Betty? Okay. All right. Anne is going to play the last line, and then if you all will sing the first and the last verse, okay? Okay, Anne.
I told Ann, I think we can have a seniors choir. Don't y'all think so? I think so. Okay, we have two special seniors now that we'd like Wayne to come up and recognize. I'm just going to say, Ann, did you get the names of every that was up here? Did you get those names? <laughs> Jackie, Lemoyne. We practice Thursday night. <laughs> we have a section on our program that you see here that says special seniors. And I would hope that every one of you know that every one of you are special seniors. Special to this congregation, special to your Father in Heaven. Many of you have received phone calls from me. Some of you have received visits from me. And if there's one message that I wanted you to know was that you are special to this congregation, never make the mistake of ever assuming that you're not needed, not wanted, and not appreciated. For I want you to know without any doubt, every one of you are needed in this congregation seated just where you're seated here this morning worshiping with us and giving us that gift that you have cultivated over the years many of us that are seated here this morning or maybe are special but we've got some extra special people God has blessed all of us that are seniors here this morning with a long fruitful life but two of our members have been blessed with a little bit extra long special life. The oldest senior member here this morning gets that recognition by living upon this earth for 99 years. And that is, of course, Brother Lloyd Parker. the oldest female member that we have has lived upon this earth for a total of 92 years, and that is Sister Julia Mae Wilson. I can only hope that God will have enough gracious compassion for me to let me stay on this earth as long as many of you have. We love you so very much. I hope this is a special day for you. When one of our seniors who's here today uh, learned that Sheila and I were heading up uh, this, this uh, senior day, she sent us a little short story of her life, uh, especially as it related to this congregation. And Sheila and I found it so meaningful that we wanted to share just some excerpts with you. And we want to share these excerpts for two main reasons. Number one is to honor all of our seniors. Uh, each of you has a unique story. And by sharing this story, we honor all of your stories. And number two, we want to bring back some memories. And I promise you, when you listen to this little story, uh, it will bring back some memories, especially for you seniors. And so now I'm going to read a few excerpts from the short story, The Life of Gladys Barnes Williams. I was born May 25th, 1932, at Item Avenue, Crichton, Alabama, at home. I received my blessing on January the 19th, 1933, by Franklin Steiner and Amos Berg. I was baptized on June the 8th, 1941, by Franklin Steiner, Bruton Green, and Henry Huff. My congregation is the Mobile Congregation RLDS Community of Christ. 
It's the only congregation I've ever been a member. I started attending this congregation in my mom's womb. So it's been over 81 years. After moving to Denver, I began attending a congregation there, but it cannot take the place of my old congregation yet. I'm 81 and a half years old. I've washed many hundreds and thousands of dishes for various get-togethers. I have two sons, and both are good guys. I taught preschool children when I was young, a long time ago. Taught Bible school, swept and cleaned the church, both the Baltimore Street Church and Isaiah Road Church. I typed the bulletin on stencils at the Baltimore Street Church. I would ride a bus from work at Mobile Press Register to the church. The annex would be open, but no one would be there usually. I'd be afraid to do that now. Like washing dishes, I made hundreds and thousands of casseroles, even headed many bake sales, even made cornbread muffins for, for some cake sales. I was women's leader a number of times when I was First married when my boys were small and I only worked part-time. Helen Carty and I would share this job as we got older. Finally, I abandoned Helen as my health deteriorated, and she's the same age, maybe even younger. But I age more quickly. <laughs> Exclamation point. I relate to this part. I also sang in the choir but not too well. <laughs> so no one was upset when I decided to quit choir. And I'll talk to you. <laughs> I remember Catherine Scarcliffe and J.C. Barlow were so active with our group. J.C. was auditioning me for choir. Don't get any ideas. Uh, and J.C. was auditioning me for choir and had to admit he didn't know what I was. Finally said soprano and was too nice to say I couldn't sing. <laughs> Two exclamation points. So I was only a filler, so choir looked larger than it really was. So that's what I am. I'm Larry Fillersteiner. I had one brother, Raymond, whom I loved dearly. He, along with my mom, Agnes Thompson Barnes, and dad, William Ebenezer Barnes, have passed away. My sister Joan is still my best friend. She was and is the light of my life. I'm nine years older than she. I told her I loved her the first time I held her, not, not too long after she was born. She was born at home on Bay Avenue. My brother was the only child born in the hospital, the old Mobile Infirmary. We were poor, never owned a car, but we didn't know it. We thought everybody was like us. Two more exclamation points. <laughs> our church was a large part of our lives. We couldn't afford to go to camp and never had enough clothes to go, but we muddled through, and look how we turned out. I'm back to not having a car, because after seeing my car, Ward advised me to give him my keys, and he'd sell it for me, and guess what? Wade totally agreed and said I'd end up having a bad wreck and possibly killing someone, and that would kill me. So now I live with my younger son and his wife in Denver. I love their dog, Hope, who lives in the house. I never had that experience, and I loved it. I married Clarence Bill Williams on November 27, 1951, in the church on Baltimore Street. Raymond Booker married us. We would have been married 50 years, November 27, 2001, but he passed away in October. We were both retired, but both had part-time jobs doing the same thing we had been doing for so many years. I wish I could read some more, but Gladys ends by saying, I am so fortunate to have a wonderful family, good friends, and a good church. So Gladys, thank you for uh,
Thank you for sharing your story. Most of all, thanks for sharing your, your life and your love. Thank you. Thank you. And in, the, in just a few moments we have left, I'm going to, I want to share my testimony of one of my favorite Bible passages. And, uh, and I want to share it on Senior Day because uh, this Bible passage talks about pictures. And if there's one thing we seniors like, it is pictures. Don't we? Uh, we like pictures. And yes, I consider myself a senior. Uh, I'm not 75, but I'm almost 68. So for today, I consider myself a junior senior. <laughs> and uh, so what does that make Lloyd and Julia May? They are, you're senior seniors, uh, Lloyd and Julia. Uh, but we, we love pictures. Who remembers my mother, Elsie? Most of you know, most of you remember that. Elsie May loved pictures. And she loved taking pictures. She took so many pictures. Uh, I kid, even today, when I hear my mother's name, I automatically say cheese. <laughs> uh, it's a reflex. I can't help it. Uh, she loved to take pictures. She took lots of pictures. When Sheila and I were raising our children, she was our official photographer, right? And she took pictures whether we wanted her to or not. She took pictures. And today I confess, and I'm, I'm not proud of this, but I confess, sometimes my mother irritated me. She was always getting us up and getting us posed. Can any of you relate to that? She, she uh, uh, most of you have your Elsie Mays in your family. But you know what? Uh, today, I am so glad she took those pictures. Today, those pictures are treasured possessions. Uh, we seniors love pictures. And we seniors, we grandparents, we especially love pictures of our children and grandchildren. We love pictures of our grandchildren. And uh, once again, I've got to confess something I'm not proud of. But when I was younger, Sometimes, some of you seniors, I'm looking at you, some of you seniors, you kind of irritated me. <laughs> you were always showing me pictures of your grandchildren, always pictures. Every time we got together, the first thing you do was show me your grandchildren. So, uh, so and it looks like David is trying to get my attention in the back. Uh, David? Well, uh, well the, somehow this picture didn't get up there. It's a miracle. I didn't know Sheila was going to do this. Uh, it's a miracle. Uh, these happen to be my grandchildren. <laughs> So Julia May, on the right is Decker, and on the left is Sawyer, our grandchildren. And do you get the point? Do you get the point? Now that I am a grandparent, I understand about all those pictures. And so now I'm doing the irritating. So I'm the irritator. But we, we seniors, we, grand, we grandparents, we love our pictures. And uh, what did we do before? What did people do before there were pictures, before photography? How did, we, how did we remember and honor people? Well, one way we did it was tattoo. Uh, throughout history, throughout history, people have used tattoos to 
uh, they would put tattoos of, uh, of, of the names and the pictures of, of people they loved. And so throughout the Bible, they used tattoos. And so understanding this, I'm now going to just share just very briefly my testimony of one of my favorite Bible passages that has to do about pictures and tattoos. And one of my favorite passages is Isaiah, the 49th chapter, verses 15 and 16, two of my, two of my favorite verses in the Bible. And, and the setting is very important. Uh, the time was about six six thousand about six hundred years before Jesus was born, and the times were very 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 bad times for the Israelites. Uh, and the times were so bad that the Israelites were saying, "God, God has forgotten us. God has forgotten us." And in that situation, the Lord spoke to the Israelites, and he spoke to us. And these are the words of the Lord to us if we ever feel forgotten. Can a mother forget her little child and not have love for her own son? I will never forget you. I have tattooed your name upon my palm. And ever before me is a picture of you. The words of the Lord. The words of the Lord. Can a mother forget her little child and not have love for her own son? I will never forget you. I've tattooed your name upon my palm. And ever before me is a picture of you. The words of the Lord. Tattooing on the palm has special meaning for you see, the palm, the palm is the part of our body that's the easiest for us to see. Have you thought about that? The palm of the, the palm is, it's always before us if we want it to be, the palm. palm. These words touched my heart the first time I heard them years ago, and, and over the years since, these words have touched my life. Uh, if it's one thing we seniors have learned, we have learned bad times will come, right? Every one of us here have had our bad times. I've had mine. And over the years, uh, when I have had bad times, and when, and when I've been tempted to, to think and feel that, that God's forgotten me, I've often, I've often remembered these words. Often remembered them. And uh, my, my testimony is that God has always kept his word to me. He's, he's always loved me, and he's never forgotten me. And uh, I hope that each of you here today is at a good time in life. Uh, and if you are, I rejoice with you, but I, but I know that uh, some of us here today are, are at a bad time. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that a few of us here are, are at a very bad time, and I don't know who you are, but I just know life. Uh, and as a senior, I know bad times come. And so uh, today, I want to encourage all of you, when the bad times come, when they come, remember these words in Isaiah. Remember these words. God will keep his word to you. He'll always love you. 
he will never forget you. So yes, we seniors, we love pictures, don't we? We grandparents love pictures. And Isaiah 49 assures us that our heavenly grandparent, he loves pictures too. I was just thinking about this. I wonder, I wonder where God keeps all his pictures. Have you thought about that? Does he keep them on a frame, in a frame? Uh, some, some very big album? Now, don't you think he keeps them in a smartphone? A smartphone. Uh, a celestial smartphone and uh, of course we don't know and of course I'm kidding but one thing we do know and I'm not kidding one thing we know wherever he keeps his pictures he has one of you he has one of me ever before him and he'll always love us and he will never forget us. Okay, now we wanted to do this as part of the service and I know it's gonna be a little confusing, but we're gonna take a group picture of you seniors. And what I would like is, Stancil, can you bring Julia May in her chair? Rick is putting a, a couple of chairs up. Travi, could you? come up and sit in a chair. Uh, uh, Larry, can you help, can you help Travi up? Is there anybody else that will need to sit in a chair? We'll have several chairs here if you need to sit in a chair. Lloyd, we'll have a chair for you. Um, and, and then after they get situated, would you ladies, the senior ladies, then come up and fall in right behind them, and then the senior men that can walk on the next row. Uh, can we do that now? We're going to take a group picture. Then, with you standing here, the congregation is going to sing to you. All right? And then we're going to ask uh, uh, Ed Fleming will dismiss us with prayer and the blessing on the food. And then Lloyd and Julia May will be the first to leave to go over to have a picture made with the cake. And then you other seniors just fall in right behind them. Y'all will be first in line over uh, at, at the uh, rock, okay? So right now, have we got, let's see, can y'all help Lloyd and, and, and Travis? Gladys, do you need to come sit in a chair? Okay, ladies, if y'all will come fill in beside and right up here.
uh, congregation, would y'all stand and get your song sheets? We're going to sing, oh, thank, we thank thee, oh God, for our singing. Let us, let us offer a prayer now in thanksgiving. Our kind and loving Heavenly Father, as we come to a close of this service, we ask thee that thy spirit that has been with us today will abide with us young and old throughout the rest of our lives. As we carry a testimony of the love of Jesus to our friends and neighbors around about the city. We also pause now for a blessing on the food that we are about to partake of the gift. And we give thee thanks for this, O Lord. Bless the hands that prepared each dish filled with blessing and love. We all give thanks to Thee, O God, and it's in our Lord and Savior's most holy name we pray. Amen. <laughs> 